Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary to our lectionary podcasts. We come to proper 15, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Uh, the, really the beloved story of the, the Canaanite woman. And it's a story of uh, Christ in a, in a kind of strange way reaching out beyond the Jewish people into the Gentile territory uh, to the most unlikely of women and also shows, I suppose, um, how it is that uh, the God of Israel, the God who fed his children manna in the desert now, will feed the world uh, with himself the bread of life. So this is uh, having come out from there, Jesus went into the uh, region of the uh, Tyre, of, of Tyre and Sidon. Now, it's worth noting that <clears throat> This story is sandwiched, I guess that's the bread kind of term, between the feeding of the, of the 5,000 in chapter 14 and the feeding of the 4,000, which will, will follow. And um, so, but now he's going into, strangely, into Gentile territory or near the Gentile territory of uh, Tyre and Sidon. And behold, there's a, a woman, a Canaanite woman, from those regions. And uh, this woman came out and uh, she cried out. Now, this is a bold faith that she has. She cried out, and um, if you're going to pray, pray like you mean it. Have mercy on me, Lord. So it's a kind of a, it's a Kyrie eleison, a eleison Kyrie. Have mercy on me, Lord. She recognizes that our Lord is the Lord, the Lord God of Israel and the king of Israel, the son of David. Um, she understands what Matthew proclaimed, that uh, Jesus is the son of David, he's the Messiah, he is the king of Israel, and yet she ex hopes for things from this king. She recognizes that this king also is Lord, Lord of all and Lord of her. And she uh, presents her problem to the king, and you can see why she cares, because it's her daughter, my daughter. Now, um, if you're ever in the hospital, it's good to have a woman as your advocate, whether it's your wife or your mother, because uh, women will cry out to the doctors in a way that sometimes men won't, that uh, they'll actually be very forceful. Here we see a forceful woman who cares about her daughter, so she cries out to, to Jesus, Lord, son of David, my daughter badly, is badly demonized. Now, um, we can only imagine what this must have been like, the kind of trauma that would have gone on in her house daily as she watched her daughter suffering from the demons. Um, we see stories of this in the New Testament, and it's terrible, of, of uh, uh, a young man, a young boy, uh, rolling about uh, in, in fire and in water and uh, crying out and it's a very awful situation that this mother has had to deal with. And this is also, it's worth thinking about, you know, when things, when bad things happen in our life, we don't know why that they might. And, um, but it's also true that sometimes uh, when things go well, we forget to pray. When things go well, we feel we have no need. When things, are, when we're healthy, the healthy have no need of a physician. Those who are unaware of their sins um, they don't beg out for forgiveness. This woman is in need, and she's drawn by that need to the Lord. And in faith, she reaches out. In faith, she calls out, oh, my daughter has it badly. She's badly demonized. And um, so what does our Lord say? Oh, boy, uh, he, he does not answer to her a, a word. He doesn't say anything. Um, and certainly this is... This is the kind of thing I suppose our apostles, the apostles learned when they were on the boat and they're, they're rowing the boat, they're rowing the boat, and they're wondering, where is the Lord in all of this? In one instance, he's sleeping. In another instance, uh, he's gone away to a mountain. Well, this woman is crying out. And, uh, maybe you've had these kinds of prayers as well. When difficult times come and you cry out and you wonder, is in fact uh, the Lord listening? Because he doesn't seem to be saying anything. He's silent. Um, so this is an uncomfortable situation for everybody involved. So the disciples came out and they, 
they, they, they, they, said, they asked him, saying, Dismiss her, for she cries out after, after us. Now, I think sometimes we make a mistake. You know, when you look at the Gospels, I think we should be ready and, uh, to see churchly language within the Gospels so that uh, the, the, the Gospels are written in a churchly way, even as we see this bread leads to the bread of life, which leads to the Lord's Supper. This dismissal term is the same, is the same word, dis, dismissal, that um, in the feeding of the 5,000, the, the, the Lord dismissed the crowds. Think about the uh, Lord's Supper. Think about the end of the church service when we are dismissed with the blessing. Um, but they're saying dismiss her without giving her the blessing. Dismiss her without giving her this bread that she needs, that she's crying out desperately for. Dismiss her. Uh, but our Lord will not uh, do that. Well, we'll see. And he answered me, he says, I was not sent except to the sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, um, this is uh, it's so interesting because our Lord says one thing and yet he seems to mean another. In, in chapter 10, he, sent, he says to his apostles, don't go to the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans even. Simply stay within the sheep, lost sheep. Of, just go to the house of Israel. Now, that was for good reason for the apostles because they were not yet ready to preach to the Gentiles. They were at the place in their seminary careers where they could proclaim the kingdom of God was at hand to people who already knew the scriptures. But they were not yet ready to proclaim the fullness of Christ, the crucified and risen Lord. They didn't even know it yet. Uh, they were still like field workers. But our Lord here, um, he's also testing the boundaries. Now, he himself is the first apostle, for I was not sent. And he is sent by the Father, then he sends the twelve. I was not sent uh, except only to the lost sheep of Israel. So he's kind of testing the situation. Um, but it's wonderful. The woman is not in any way discouraged. Or if she is, she doesn't let that stop her because she still comes after him, coming after. She proskuneo, she uh, bends down, she falls down before him. Um, it's so interesting because in the Gospel of Matthew, the, the people who do this first are the Magi who come from the east. Many will come from east and west, uh, Matthew chapter 8, to recline with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the fathers, uh, while many of the sons of the kingdom will be outside and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, here we see with the Magi, we saw people come from the east and worship and bow down before the, uh, the, the child Savior. And now we see this woman, not deterred, she comes and she worships him, saying, Kyrie, Lord, help me. Oh, I love that kind of bold faith. It's inspiring and... Uh, Jesus, we know, doesn't yet, uh, it doesn't yet give in. He, he plays with her, you could say. He wants to elicit her uh, cries for, 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 for of faith. So it's not good to, it's not good to, to take that bread. Ah, there's the bread. The bread, which bread? The bread of the children, and throw it to the dogs. Well, the bread of the children. This is the Lord's prayer. You know, when we pray the Lord's prayer, the Our Father, we're praying as children. And as children, we're playing the Our Father, and we say, give us this day our daily bread. That's an imperative. It's a very bold prayer that our Lord gives us to pray, to pray for the bread. Now, the bread is all the things that we need in this daily life, to be sure. Even more so, it's the bread of life, Christ himself, which is the bread that sustains us. She cries out for this bread, uh, the bread of the children. Now, the bread of the children it's instructed that this comes after the feeding of the 5,000. Remember, there were 12 baskets left over. And the 12 baskets were indicative of the, the children of Israel. There are 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles sent to the 12 tribes. Um, so there are 12 baskets, but she knows, she knows there's more bread left over. Take, you can't take that bread of the children and just throw it to the dogs. Now the dogs, that was a phrase that was used by, uh, in a derogatory way that the Jews would sometimes talk about Gentiles, like stones, They're, they could be called stones, they could be called 
dogs. It's not good to take the bread of the children, the children of Israel, and throw it to the dogs. Ah, but she's not deterred, is she? We know this. We love that's why we love this story. Ah, yes, Lord. Ah, but even the dogs, yes, they they eat from uh, the crumbs that fall from the table. Who could deny that, Lord? That um, sure, maybe not, maybe not the first. Uh, bread that's put on the table, but there will be bread that will fall to the ground, and the dogs indeed are allowed to, to eat that. And um, I, you wonder whether she knew about the feeding of the 5,000, and the feeding of the 5,000. Remember the manna, and the manna, when our Lord rained down bread from heaven, they weren't to eat bread or to save that bread, except for the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day, but they would eat their daily bread. Um, after the feeding of the 5,000, uh, the, 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 the apostles were told to keep that bread. There were 12 baskets of leftovers. Those leftovers are like, it's like the bread that falls from the table, which is, uh, it reminds me of Psalm 23, where uh, when our Lord gives in abundance, it says, my cup runneth over. It's not like our Lord takes it and fills the cup halfway or something like that. He fills it all the way up and there's more. And so also with the bread, there's always more. And this is the feast of the Lord. There's, um, if we turn down this feast, if we reject this invitation, then it's on us. But there's always more when it comes to the Lord's table. There's always more bread by which our Lord will feed us. And this is the bread of life. This is the bread that he gives us in the Holy Supper that comes with all of the blessings that is meant for the life of the world. So she's happy to take the bread or the scraps. And uh, you can see now, the, uh, Jesus is, you know, his look, the way he looked at this woman, um, before it was stern with a smile in the background. Now you can almost see his, this, his, uh, his lips coming up. And he, he, started, he, came, he breaks out into the smile. You can see it. And he said to her, oh, woman. <laughs> oh, wow, woman. <laughs> Great, great is your faith. And yes, we can say it, great is faith. Um, faith, in one sense, is always receiving. It's always passive in that we receive the gifts from God. And yet faith is also always active. Faith is bold, and she is bold. And here, talking about the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Our Lord prayed, let it be to you as you wish, as you desire. It's almost here like our Lord is wrestling um, Sometimes I think with a parent, a father wrestles with uh, his son, uh, and with the hope, though, that you know you, you let the son win. Uh, you can jar and uh, joust and spar, and uh, and you can. Uh, but it, the the idea is to allow the other person. It's almost like um, uh, sometimes you see this in romance, an old romantic comedy, where there's a kind of a jousting and sparring, and then he allows her to win, and he's delighted that she's engaged in this. Let it be to you as you wish. And um, now what earthly prayers our God will grant to us, what he will say no and yes and uh, not yet, we do not know. And yet our Lord does say pray without ceasing. And he always says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the bread of life. And um, of course all the great gifts will come to us on the day of the the resurrection. So be active in prayer. Pray to the Lord. Know even when he appears not to be listening, of course he is. And even when he appears like he has a frown on his face, his face don't buy it. Um, there's a smile underneath. There's a yes behind the no. Um, and, and here we see that uh, the daughter of her was healed. When? At that very hour because Christ is the Lord and he has the power. The power to give us, to, to heal, uh, both our earthly wounds and our uh, and those the, the wounds of the soul, and this is a great thing to celebrate, as is the faith of the Canaanite woman and the Lord whom she loved. So thank you.